It's the OCG Fam Show. If you're using RO water in your nectar grow, you need to watch this. So we got questions. Are you ready? We're going to give it a shot. Through beer. Relax. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Gossip Garden. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? How you doing out there? Let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it after the show right now. Let's just get into the show. So, uh, sorry for the gap between the episodes, but I am back at it every day. For the most part, getting this done. More viewer questions episodes. More of the stuff that's not alkalinity. More of the old school stuff. But um, what we're doing now, what I'm going to do today is start of a set of episodes. We did a viewer questions episode and it was, oh gosh, it was like an hour and 20 minutes. So I look at the stats of, you know, how many people are watching it. Not many people watch it all the way to the end. So I think it's valuable for us to take those, each of those questions and do a little mini episode on each of those questions so we can break those out so they can be more useful to you. So we're gonna do that and most of those were on RO and that's what it's gonna be today, RO and alkalinity and then alkalinity more in general too, but using RO water and I think they were some really good stuff if that's your thing if you're using RO water. So we're gonna go through all those and when you're watching those or not watching those, whatever you're doing, um, if it applies to you, great. And if you have other questions involving that, lay them in there and let's dig into that subject deeper still even as we're doing that. But I'm going to start intermixing those episodes with getting back to the old school stuff of all the other issues because I think for the most part, for a lot of people, alkalinity is not an issue and they just want the old school content. So we're going to be doing that too. So those kinds of questions, whatever questions you have, throw them in the comments and we're going to be getting after those way more often, but over these next few episodes, with some other episodes maybe interspersed as we get questions after we do another viewer question episode. This is confusing. We're going to be doing some RO stuff over the last few, next few episodes. We're going to be doing those alkalinity questions and answering any other alkalinity questions you may have, but get your questions in there that are more general in nature. Scott and I are going to do a viewer questions episode very soon and get into those, but I've really gone on and on. RO water, if you're using RO water, this clip I'm going to show you is an excellent overview of that and we'll tie into some other ones we're going to do over the next few days. So, sorry I took so long. Watch this clip, I'll talk to you after. So Jeff Stewart says, trying to get a handle on using some of the info being presented regarding water and alkalinity. I use RO to, I use RO due to poor water quality in the municipal system. Just prepared some mix with garden lime incorporated into it. Wasn't exactly sure on application rate to use. Six ounces to 20 gallons to, uh, uh, referenced in the pig farmer video was my starting point. Should I be introducing carbonated water to react with the calcium carbonate in my feeds? Had been using the Olympus up to raise the pH then carbonated water to lower it in my feeds last cycle with decent results. Will pH solution be enough to react with the lime without additional inputs? I mean, ideally. So if you, you know, the hard part right now is we're, and there's a lot of questions out there from everybody yeah. looking at, you know, I need these charts to tell me when and what and how much garden lime or calcium carbonate or limestone that we need to be adding to our mixes to kind of combat defective water or broken water or RO water, you know, the mm -hmm. things that are ripping the alkalinity and the pH from our potting soils. Mm -hmm. um, like what he said, everything he's doing is all beneficial for what he's doing. Right. Um, I think the six ounces per 20 gallons, we're finding even with pig right now, that one cup per 10 gallons for people who are naturally going acidic during the bloom stage. So if you're in the second week of bloom mm -hmm. and your, your soil pH slurries are 6.0 or less, then we know that your soil and your water has a tendency to want to go to the acidic side. So okay. oh, knowing that, by adding one cup of garden lime, limestone, calcium carbonate, not dolomite, not gypsum, so okay. garden lime, which is from down to earth, that's what they call it, is garden, garden lime. Okay, and, and that's, that's eight ounces? Limestone. What? Eight ounces, one cup? One cup is eight ounces. Okay, so okay. He could, right now, he's probably totally fine. He's uh -huh. probably having no issues with that. Um, the only thing he might see is at the very end of an eight to ten week crop, he might be tailing off on the pH again. But, you know, maintain your six ounces. In about week four of bloom, do another slurry and monitor what your pH is at that time to see if 
indeed you need to add some more or if your six ounces is going to carry you all the way out. That six ounces, there is no magic amount of how many ounces per gallon and only because everybody's water system is so different that, you know, if you put it eight ounces and you're using RO water through a old membrane that's still getting um, alkalinity through the membrane because the membrane's full, then that might be too much. If your RO is brand new and fresh and you're potting soil um, and you're really aggressively feeding, you might find that you need more because you're feeding them more aggressively, stripping more of the alkalinity out of the soil. So here's the deal with alkalinity in the soil. If I don't have any issues and I put in like the CalPro we talk about, which is a pelleted limestone or calcite, it's a chunk of rock, not a fine powder, it's not a soluble mineral at all. Uh-huh. It's actually, it's a rock. So as it sits in your soil, if your water isn't acidic and nothing's breaking it down, it just sits there as a drain. Doing water. nothing. No. It's, it's just a mechanical drain your for your... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If your water's 8.5 and your, your pH and everything down to 6.4, but the uh, Olympus mm-hmm. up is uh-huh. building the alkalinity from uh-huh. that pH adjustment, Everything in that soil that you've added in the by in the carbonate state. Um, sorry. All right. Real business. Um, this is real yeah. business. Well, I, mean, but I know, can you? The stuff that can lose you money. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some days with you, I guess. Uh. So, the as it's sitting in the soil not being dissolved by the acidic water it just sits there it's not going to affect the ph it's not going to spike you out from nowhere it's not going to add parts per million it's just a rock in your soil at that point kind of like the azomite it's just a mineral in the soil once your water is broken or unconditioned or non-alkaline or acidic it will start drawing off of that limestone making that limestone more available to the plant in the form of bicarbonate and then reducing the presence of that limestone in the soil in the long term would cause acidity. So the trick is there's no chart we can make right now that will tell you exactly. We are working on a very simple, Mm -hmm. if you have RO water and your pH does this, this is what you would like to do. If you have distilled water and your pH does this or You know, we have a few more questions coming up in this episode Uh about, you know, my tap water's decent, but it's a little high in parts per million, but the alkalinity's great, and my RO water has no alkalinity with zero parts per million. Can I blend those two? And we're finding a lot of guys are getting through their entire grow by taking their not perfect water and Uh blending it with RO water and then getting, you know, 75 parts per million of alkalinity, 109 parts per million of you know, whatever the total dissolved solids are in that solution, creating their own recipe of water so they don't need to use so much limestone or they don't need to buy a calcite charger. They don't need a CO2 reactor because we can kind of custom build your water and then custom build your soil to balance all of it. Okay. What do you think of that? Useful, informative, helpful? Um, What questions do you have about that? But more importantly, what general questions do you have about nectar that we can answer in our next viewer questions episode? I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.